The Indo-Parthian kingdom was ruled by the Gondopharid dynasty and other rulers who were a group of ancient kings from Central Asia that ruled parts of present-day Afghanistan, Pakistan and northwestern India, during or slightly before the 1st century AD. For most of their history, the leading Gondopharid kings held Taxila in the present Punjab province of Pakistan as their residence, but during their last few years of existence the capital shifted between Kabul and Peshawar. These kings have traditionally been referred to as Indo-Parthians, as their coinage was often inspired by the Arsacid dynasty, but they probably belonged to a wider group of Iranian tribes who lived east of Parthia proper, and there is no evidence that all the kings who assumed the title Gondophares, which means holder of glory, were even related. The Indo-Parthians are noted for the construction of the Buddhist monastery Takht i Bahi UNESCO World Heritage Site. Gondophares I and his successors Gondophares I originally seems to have been a ruler of Sistan in what is today eastern Iran, probably a vassal or relative of the Aprakarajas. Around 20–10 BC, he made conquests in the former Indo-Scythian kingdom, perhaps after the death of the important ruler Aziz. Gondophares became the ruler of areas comprising Arachosia, Sistan, Sindh, Punjab, and the Kabul Valley, but it does not seem as though he held territory beyond eastern Punjab. Gondophares called himself, King of Kings, a Parthian title that in his case correctly reflects that the Indo Parthian Empire was only a loose framework. A number of smaller dynasts certainly maintained their positions during the Indo Parthian period, likely in exchange for their recognition of Gondophares and his successors. These smaller dynasts included the Aprakarajas themselves, and Indo-Scythian satraps such as Zionizes and Rajuvula, as well as anonymous Scythians who struck imitations of Aziz coins. The Kasaharadas also held sway in Gujarat, perhaps just outside Gondafer's dominions. After the death of Gondafer's I, the empire started to fragment. The name or title Gondafer's was adapted by Sarpidones, who became Gondafer's II and was possibly son of the first Gondafer's. Even though he claimed to be the main ruler, Sarpidones's rule was shaky and he issued a fragmented coinage in Sindh, eastern Punjab and Arachosia in southern Afghanistan. The most important successor was Abdagasas, Gondafer's nephew, who ruled in Punjab and possibly in the homeland of Sistan. After a short reign, Sarpidones seems to have been succeeded by Orthanes, who became Gondafer's the third Gadana. Orthanes ruled mostly in Sistan and Arachosia, with Abdagasas further east, during the first decades AD, and was briefly succeeded by his son Ubuzane's coin. After 20 AD, a king named Sases, a nephew of the Aprakaraja ruler Aspavarma, took over Abdagasas territories and became Gondafer's IV Sases. According to Senior, this is the Gondafers referred to in the Takht i Bahi inscription. There were other minor kings. Sanabares was an ephemeral usurper in Sistan, who called himself Great King of Kings, and there was also a second Abdagas's coin, a ruler named Agata in Sindh, another ruler called Satavaster's coin, and an anonymous prince who claimed to be brother of the king Arsaces, in that case, an actual member of the ruling dynasty in Parthia. But the Indo-Parthians never regained the position of Gondafers I, and from the middle of the 1st century AD the Kushans under Kujula Kadphises began absorbing the northern Indian part of the kingdom. The last king Pakors perhaps before 100 AD only ruled in Sistan and Kandahar. <laughs> Archaeology and sources The city of Taxila is thought to have been a capital of the Indo-Parthians. Large strata were excavated by Sir John Marshall with a quantity of Parthian-style artifacts. The nearby temple of Jandial is usually interpreted as a Zoroastrian fire temple from the period of the Indo-Parthians. Some ancient writings describe the presence of the Indo-Parthians in the area, such as the story of St. Thomas the Apostle, who was recruited as a carpenter to serve at the court of King Gudnafar thought to be Gondafers in India. The Acts of Thomas describes in Chapter 17 Thomas's visit to King Gudnafar in northern India. Chapters 2 and 3 depict him as embarking on a sea voyage to India, thus connecting Thomas to the west coast of India. As Senior points out, this Gudnafar has usually been identified with the first Gondafers, who has thus been dated after the advent of Christianity, but there is no evidence for this assumption, and Senior's research shows that Gondafers I could be dated even before 1 AD. 
If the account is even historical, St. Thomas may have encountered one of the later kings who bore the same title. The Greek philosopher Apollonius of Tyana is related by Philostratus in Life of Apollonius Tyana to have visited India, and specifically the city of Taxila around 46 AD. He describes constructions of the Greek type, probably referring to Sir Cap, and explains that the Indo-Parthian king of Taxila, named Frats, received a Greek education at the court of his father and spoke Greek fluently. Tell me, O king, how you acquired such a command of the Greek tongue, and whence you derived all your philosophical attainments in this place. My father, after a Greek education, brought me to the sages at an age somewhat too early perhaps, for I was only twelve at the time, but they brought me up like their own son, for any that they admit knowing the Greek tongue they are especially fond of, because they consider that in virtue of the similarity of his disposition he already belongs to themselves." The Periplus of the Erythraean Sea is a surviving first-century guide to the routes commonly being used for navigating the Arabian Sea. It describes the presence of Parthian kings fighting with each other in the area of Sindh, a region traditionally known at that time as Scythia, due to the previous rule of the Indo-Scythians there. This river Indus has seven mouths, very shallow and marshy, so that they are not navigable, except the one in the middle, at which by the shore, is the market town, Barbaricum. Before it there lies a small island, and inland behind it is the metropolis of Scythia, Minagara. It is subject to Parthian princes who are constantly driving each other out. Periplus of the Erythraean Sea, Chap 38 An inscription from Taktai Bahi bears two dates, one in the regnal year 26 of the Maharaja Guduvhara again thought to be a Gondafares, and the year 103 of an unknown era. Religion of the Indo-Parthians To the contrary of the Indo-Greeks or Indo-Scythians, there are no explicit records of Indo-Parthian rulers supporting Buddhism, such as religious dedications, inscriptions, or even legendary accounts. Also, although Indo-Parthian coins generally closely follow Greek numismatics, they never display the Buddhist triratna symbol apart from the later SASEs, nor do they ever use depictions of the elephant or the bull, possible religious symbols which were profusely used by their predecessors. They are thought to have retained Zoroastrianism, being of Iranian extraction themselves. This Iranian mythological system was inherited from them by the later Kushans who ruled from the Peshawar Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region of Pakistan. Topic. Representation of Indo-Parthian devotees On their coins and in the art of Gandhara, Indo-Parthians are depicted with short crossover jackets and large baggy trousers, possibly supplemented by chap-like over trousers. Their jackets are adorned with rows of decorative rings or medals. Their hair is usually bushy and contained with a headband, a practice largely adopted by the Parthians from the 1st century AD. Individuals in Indo Parthian attire are sometimes shown as actors in Buddhist devotional scenes. It is usually considered that most of the excavations that were done at Sirkap near Taxila by John Marshall relate to Indo Parthian layers, although more recent scholarship sometimes relates them to the Indo Greeks instead. These archaeological researches provided a quantity of Hellenistic artifacts combined with elements of Buddhist worship stupas. Some other temples, such as nearby Jandial may have been used as a Zoroastrian fire temple. <inaudible> <inaudible> Buddhist sculptures The statues found at Sir Cap in the late Scythian to Parthian level, level 2, 1 to 60 AD suggest an already developed state of Gandharan art at the time or even before Parthian rule. A multiplicity of statues, ranging from Hellenistic gods, to various Gandharan lay devotees, are combined with what are thought as some of the early representations of the Buddha and Bodhisattvas. Today, it is still unclear when the Greco-Buddhist art of Gandhara exactly emerged, but the findings in Sir Cap do indicate that this art was already highly developed before the advent of the Kushans. <laughs> <laughs> stone palettes Numerous stone palettes found in Gandhara are considered as good representatives of Indo-Parthian art. 
These palettes combine Greek and Persian influences, together with a frontality in representations which is considered as characteristic of Parthian art. Such palettes have only been found in archaeological layers corresponding to Indo-Greek, Indo-Scythian and Indo-Parthian rule, and are essentially unknown the preceding Mauryan layers or the succeeding Kushan layers. Very often these palettes represent people in Greek dress in mythological scenes, but a few of them represent people in Parthian dress headbands over bushy hair, crossed over jacket on a bare chest, jewelry, belt, baggy trousers. A palette from the Naperstek Museum in Prague shows an Indo-Parthian king seated cross-legged on a large sofa, surrounded by two attendants also in Parthian dress. They are shown drinking and serving wine. <laughs> Silk Road transmission of Buddhism Some pockets of Parthian rule remained in the east, even after the takeover by the Sassanids in 226. From the second century several Central Asian Buddhist missionaries appeared in the Chinese capital cities of Luoyang and sometimes Nanjing, where they particularly distinguished themselves by their translation work. The first known translators of Buddhist texts into Chinese are actually Parthian missionaries, distinguished in Chinese by their Parthian surname, An, for Anxi. Country of the Arsacids. And Shi Kao, was a Parthian prince, who made the first known translations of Hinayana Buddhist texts into Chinese. 148 and Suan, was a Parthian merchant who became a monk in China 181 AD. Tan Ti, c. a Parthian monk. And Fajin, a monk of Parthian origins. Main Indo-Parthian rulers Gondafers I c. 20 BC, first years AD coin Gondafers II Sarpedones first years AD, c. 20 AD coin Abdagasses I first years AD, mid-first century AD coin Gondafers III Gudana, previously Orthanes c. 20 AD to 30 AD Gondafers the fourth SASEs, mid first century AD. Ubuzanes, late first century AD. Pakors, late first century AD. Coin. Topic. See also. Indo Greek Kingdom. Indo Sasanians. Indo Scythians. Kushan Empire. Uji. Palavas Camboyas equals equals notes <laughs>